On today's episode, I'm going to help you dive into the scary, mysterious waters of fuzz and figure out which one's for you. We're going to talk about four major fuzz topologies, and I'm going to help you make some decisions. You won't be confused after this. Let's roll. <music> The world of fuzz pedals can be really overwhelming when you're trying to pick one out, understand what your favorite player uses, and most of all, what are you gonna buy? This can be really, really confusing. So I'm gonna break this down into categories based on how many transistors are in a type of fuzz. Now, this is by no means gonna cover every type of fuzz. I know there are some of you in the comments already. You're just naming stuff I'm not gonna mention. I am gonna mention, in my opinion, the four most popular topologies of fuzz, and that will give you a grid on what you like and probably don't like. So let's start off with the most famous, in my opinion, the two transistor topology. The two transistor fuzz topology appears sometime around 1965 in London when a Vox design engineer, Dick Denny, creates the Vox 816 distortion booster. You plug this whole thing in, it creates fuzz and it has two transistors. We later see this used in a 1.5 tone bender that's really rare, but most notably and most famously, we see it in the 1966 Dallas Arbiter fuzz face. This is the most famous fuzz pedal on earth. Jimi Hendrix used it, he loved it. It's been on countless records, Dark Side of the Moon, Eric Clapton, I mean, the Beatles, everyone loved this pedal to some extent and for good reason. It's very simple, it only has two transistors. You'll understand that as the episode goes on and that simplicity lends itself to making very good sounds without a lot of hassle. So let's plug one up. I am gonna choose the Smiley from my Legends of Fuzz series. The Smiley is a reference to the smiley face of a fuzz face. And there are hundreds of versions of a fuzz face. Dunlop makes really amazing ones. I have an episode called Mini Fuzz Faces. Check that out, they're really great. You can buy really bougie stuff like Analog Man's Sun Face. Um, yeah, tons of fuzz face types, but they're all at the end of the day, the two transistor topology. Let's plug this up and listen to it. That is the fuzz face. And the thing to note, in my opinion, is on a typical fuzz face, just dime the fuzz control out. And this brings to light here, a subject that a lot of people like to talk about, which is, does this fuzz clean up with the volume knob? So what does that mean? Let me show you. And I think it's best exemplified with the fuzz face because the two transistor topology does it best. So I have my fuzz control all the way up, as if there's not even a knob, it's just max. And then I set my volume to taste, and I adjust my gain on the guitar. And it's really that simple. So here is full fuzz, what you just heard. And then I'm gonna back that off, and you're gonna hear cleanup. That's the best way to describe it. Back up, back down. So I'll play a passage. You'll see people like Eric Johnson do this. I remember watching Austin City Limits and I thought it was like witchcraft. He didn't touch anything and his sound changed. It blew my mind. So I'll start with a high gain, clean up and go back to high gain. That is what people mean by that. And the fuzz face is the best. If you like that technique and that sound, that's the pedal. The two transistor topology 
fuzz face kind of thing. Tone Bender 1.5, whatever. There's a ton of names, but it's basically called a fuzz face. One more topic that's easily understandable inside the fuzz face topology is the subject of bias controls. A lot of you don't know what those are. That can be really confusing. And honestly, a lot of fuzz pedals that have three knobs, they're really just fuzz faces with an extra bias control knob. And some people will call the bias things like heat or gate, whatever. But I'm gonna show you how that works and why it works. We'll use the three series fuzz. Now, essentially the three series fuzz and the legends of fuzz smiley, it's a fuzz face circuit. They're both really the same circuit. This is tweaked different, it has slight different flavor but it has the bias control. So let's throw it on the amp and I'll demonstrate that and what it's doing. I have the three series fuzz on and I have the bias control off, which means that the pedal is getting all the voltage it means. So this bias control and any other bias control you're gonna encounter typically is changing the current to the collector of a transistor. Now what this means is it's starving or underpowering the transistor. Please, sir, I want some more. And this creates some really interesting sounds. So in the fuzz face, you have two transistors, number one and number two. And the way you do it best on a fuzz face is you put a potentiometer, which is a movable resistor, on the leg of that second transistor collector. And as you turn it, you're essentially telling that transistor I'm gonna take you off of what you should be. So it should be 4.5 volts. That makes the perfect function for a transistor in this setting. But this bias control can starve it down to almost nothing. It can create weird gating sounds and you can give it too much voltage, which makes it really big and bold sounding. So bias controls make these classic circuits way more tweakable. You can do this on a tone bender. You can do it on really any fuzz, but it's mostly seen with the fuzz face. So here's the sound of the bias pretty much off or set to how it should be for a fuzz face to sound great. <coughs> I'm gonna roll it and just keep rolling it, play, keep going and going, and I'll just go the whole width or the whole circumference of that bias control. This is where you start to hear the term Velcro fuzz. It's this splattering ripping sound and that is from misbiasing that transistor. And this is the max setting right here. So the most you can make that ripping noise or the gating noise. So the bias lets you go from big, creamy, hate that buzzword, but it's a thing, all the way to this broken Velcro no sustain, big sustain to no sustain. And that's really useful. And you'll find that control on a lot of things. Now, in closing, the fuzz face is the best circuit for you if you want sustain, but mellow, approachable, warm, somewhat predictable fuzz. It's classic, think Hendrix, think Dark Side of the Moon, David Gilmore tones. It's just a really good, simple, stable, easy to use fuzz. We just covered two transistor topologies, so can you take a wild guess what's next? What topology would be next? Go ahead. What do you think it is? Three transistors? It's three transistors. It's numerical order. So the three transistor fuzz is actually the first fuzz ever invented. We see it in 62 with the Maestro fuzz tone, but the Maestro fuzz tone is not a great fuzz example because it really doesn't sound good. So much so that the origin of the three transistor fuzz that we're gonna consider today came from someone modifying this. So in 1965, London as well, we see the appearance of the Solasound Tone Bender. Now this is the classic 
and traditionally known three transistor topology. Now this pedal is really great. It's on tons of records. It's a much more aggressive fuzz than the fuzz face. And there's a lot of examples of this throughout history. Obviously, when it says tone bender, it's a tone bender, but there's also different versions like the Marshall Supa Fuzz. This was made by the same people. It was just made for them and made for Marshall and has a different name, slightly different circuit. You see uh, the Zonk machine is another vintage version. You see versions that have tone controls. So the three transistor topology opens up Another little bonus, which is sometimes you see it with a tone control, and if you do, it's based around the Tone Bender Mark III or IV, and that's when you start seeing things like the Full Tone Soul Bender. Now, I have the Bender Legends of Fuzz series, which I replicated this with, which brings up another point here. Uh, before I plug this up and jam, I wanna discuss something important to fuzzes, and it's best seen in this case example. A lot of people will say, you need to buy a germanium fuzz. What does that mean? Or they'll say, don't buy a silicon fuzz. They're so different. Mm. <laughs> Something funny? Oh. All of these fuzzes basically use a transistor to create distortion, overloading that transistor. The very first transistors made were germanium. They're metal, they have a little metal case, they're really primitive, they're temperature sensitive, and people swear up and down they sound better. Well, there is no better, they have a sound, but it doesn't mean that if you buy a silicon transistor fuzz, it doesn't sound good, that's insane because Jimi Hendrix preferred silicon, but you won't really ever hear people say that. What matters is if a circuit is designed properly around a part. So long story short, I took a germanium fuzz. This is a 1973 Mark III, my favorite fuzz in the room, and I created this based off of it, but I used silicon, made it sound exactly the same. So the, the little lesson here, the Sesame Street moral is, don't let guitar nerds tell you silicon is bad. Let's put this on and let you hear a tone bender or the three transistor topology. So unlike the two transistor fuzz face topology where I said dime out the fuzz control and use your guitar's volume to create cleaner sounds, I wouldn't really advise that on a three transistor topology tone bender style pedal because the fuzz control, often called attack, is really great. You wanna use it. So I'm gonna play through some power chord stuff and just adjust the attack control and let you hear it. Right now I have the tone control set halfway, which is kinda of bright, kinda of dark, it's in the middle. And then we'll play with that second. And just notice this fuzz is way more aggressive. This is less Hendrix and more Led Zeppelin. That is how I've always thought of these and I think that'd be helpful to a lot of you. So that's the fuzz control pretty much down. Turn it up halfway. brighten it with the tone control. I'm gonna turn the fuzz back, it's a little much for me. And then I'll play with this and show you dark and bright tones using that MK3 tone control style circuit. <laughs> That's the three transistor topology, more aggressive, way more tweakable, but it has its advantages for certain people, just like the two transistor topology suits other people. Depends on what you like. Let's move on to the next one.
The next topology is not two transistors. It's not three, but can you guess what it is? Four. It's four, because numbers go up. They rarely go down. That's something I've learned. So the four transistor topology is really, really popular. Other than the fuzz face, I think the fuzz face is the most used, but it could be this. Not that it matters, it kind of matters to me. It, it's a really popular circuit, and it comes to us from 1969, the Big Muff. This is called the Triangle Version. These are made in New York City by Electroharmonics. And later on, we see like the Ram's Head version. It has a little Ram's Head thing here. But these are all four transistor fuzzes. You see lots of variants or takes on this. In the 70s, Ibanez had a pedal called Overdrive. It's actually a four transistor fuzz, Big Muff. And then even like my friends at Earthquaker, they have this, the Cloven Hoof, different versions of the Hoof Fuzz. That is a tribute back to the Ram's Head name, the Hoof of the Ram. And then I have the Crimson. I also have the Muffaletta. You might've seen that. But this Crimson staying in theme with the Legends of Fuzz, this is a, uh, early 90s version of a Big Muff that was made in Soviet Union. It's four transistors, tons of gain, like gobs of gain, has the tone control that you kind of saw from that tone bender. And this is the sound of grunge. It is just really associated with a bigger, more modern fuzz sound. It's tighter, it just has more power overall. It's really aggressive. It's actually thought of when it came out as a distortion. Um, it's somewhere in a distortion world, but it really is a fuzz and it's really, really popular. So let's plug this up and give it a listen. I'm gonna play the Crimson here with the sustain or distortion or fuzz control. It can be called many different things all the way up and I have the tone control set to the center. Now you're gonna hear really aggressive, modern-ish distortion fuzz. That's how it has always been to me. We know that there are rumors that Hendrix had a big muff. There's no proof that he used it on records. Mike says he did, but we don't really know. We do know that Santana has used a big muff. We know that David Gilmour has used a big muff like on tons of Pink Floyd things. The Comfortably Numb solo is a big muff. We also know that Smashing Pumpkins and Mud Honey and all the grunge bands have used this. So I'm gonna play a bunch of power chords and go that route, but it definitely will do classic sounds because it is a fuzz. Here we go. <laughs> to brighten the tone control. I'm gonna darken it. I'm gonna back the fuzz all the way off and show you how that sounds as I turn it up. It's super powerful. It does a lot. I even heard Neil Young-ish small amp tones in that just now. You can do a lot of things with it and it's really dependent on the guitar, obviously, as with all fuzz. Now, one thing the Big Muff makes me think of that's applicable to all fuzzes is a question or a comment or a forum fact that I hear a lot. And it's, you have to play fuzz with a big dirty amp, like play it into distortion. I've never found that to be true. I play clean at least 50 watt amps and I love every fuzz into that. Some people will swear that fuzz sounds horrible into a clean amp, but that's what I'm doing today. That's what I've done my whole life. And that's what tons of your guitar heroes have done. Now, my advice though, is just make sure when you play fuzz, you're loud. I think there is an aspect of the low end in a fuzz circuit how crude fuzz circuits are, they don't sound good quiet. Like if you're hearing your guitar in the room louder than your amp, the fuzz pedal is gonna sound like total crap. So don't do that. Turn your amp up or turn the pedal up. And a big muff is crazy loud and powerful. And the louder you get it, the better it does sound. Um, I'm on like two here 
and it's blowing my head off. So loud is more good with fuzz. Let's move on. Next up is not two transistor topology. It's not three, it's not four. It's really none of that. It's a totally different beast. It is called octave fuzz. Now this can be confusing because we've all heard bands like the White Stripes and you hear a big fuzz tone with a low octave inside of that sound. That's not exactly octave fuzz. It's octave pedal effect, whammy, pog added to fuzz. Octave fuzz is a singular circuit that started in the late 60s and it's way more crude and it's way more classic. The best example to start with to understand octave fuzz is really where it all began, which is in about 1967, an English naval engineer named Roger Mayer finds Jimi Hendrix at a club and takes him an invention he made, and that invention is Octavia. This is a reissue called Octavio, same thing. This is the Einstein Rosenbridge of fuzz. Basically, it is the idea of folding something over and touching it again. So Einstein had the theory that you fold over time and touch it and you can time travel. This takes the waveform, folds it over itself and touches it to itself again and creates an octave that sounds like it's 12 frets above where you're at on the guitar. It's really crude, it's super violent. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. It can be scary and awesome. It's like, awesome for riffs. It's a massive sound that nothing else really does. And so there's all kinds of examples. Obviously this one, you have the blue Octavia that comes later. Uh, this is famous, the super fuzz, not super, super. That's a big confusion to a lot of people with fuzz pedals. There's the Fox Tone Machine and the Dan Electro, same guy, he put out the the 3699, which is this. There's all kinds of octave fuzzes. So staying in the Legends of Fuzz vein here, I'm gonna use the Supreme, which is an exact replica of this guy and uh, probably my favorite octave fuzz ever. And we're gonna hook it up and let you hear what octave fuzz sounds like. That waveform is bent over onto itself. It's a really great sound and Hendrix used it best, I think, but there's a lot of other examples. Let's give it a whirl. I have the Supreme set with the fuzz. In this case, it's called Expand or Expander. Different octave fuzzes had different names for that fuzz sound. Because that fuzz control is intricate. It actually, as you turn it up, you hear more of the octave. Some octave pedals, a little more subtle, a little more in your face, but at the end of the day, all these designs, Tone Machine, Super Fuzz, whatever, they're all pretty similar. Um, I'm just gonna play it. Notice you will hear the upper octave more when I'm down here. You'll hear it up here, but when I actually go the octave on the neck of the guitar, that octave in the pedal becomes even stronger. So that's a lot of how you hear riffs like the black keys, things like that. You'll hear these big chunky riffs with the bass, but then the solos feel brighter. It's actually just the pedal responding differently as they play it at a different range on the neck of the guitar. <laughs> first 8-bit maybe. I don't know. But yeah, you hear it in tons of really great classic rock and a few people who venture out and use it today. So that's octave fuzz. One thing to talk about here that's notable with all of these fuzz pedals um, is that these need to go first in your chain usually. Now let me explain that. Fuzz is a really primitive and simple effect. It has very few parts in it. And all you need to know is it's not a fancy circuit. It's very crude. And it needs to see your guitar touch the input of the circuit. Meaning my guitar cable 
really, really, really needs to go into the input of this fuzz pedal. It doesn't need to have buffers or other pedals in front of it. And so we'll often say, put your fuzz pedal first in the chain. And people will say, okay, yeah, it still sounds weird. And we're like, is it first in the chain? And people go, well, I had my tuner before it. It has to be absolutely first. You can't put your tuner in front. You don't wanna put anything in there. You want your guitar pickup to connect directly to that first transistor in this very crude circuit. The only exception to this is the four transistor topology. When you start dealing with the big muff, because it has more parts, four transistors, it's more stable and it can handle being put where you'd normally put a distortion pedal in most cases and in my experience. That is a wrap on these four major and most important fuzz topologies. I hope that you can hear the differences and that the explanations kind of guide you to what you want to buy or try or take the risk to buy a fuzz type you've never played before. Let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite. Uh, let me know what you have experience with. And if you have any other questions, please drop them down there. We'll try to answer those. Yeah, go buy some fuzz. Let's head to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by 2019 Shimmy. This is by Billy Martin and Will Blades. Here's the deal. You probably never heard of this, but you need to check it out. It is an instrumental record where two guys jam live, one on drums and one on a Hammond organ, and it's freaking amazing. It's just groovy, like the incredible beats, melodies. If you're a fan of John Schofield and that kind of chromatic jazz thing, free flow, this is right up your alley, so check it out. Um, I honestly like every song. I like to put this on in the car and just drive, you know, drive thousands of miles. I also like to put it on when I'm working. It's just really good, really awesome jams that can be thoughtless, or you can think about them and enjoy them. It's kind of for everybody. So check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was very, very useful to you to navigate crazies of fuzz and all the opinions. Uh, as I said, there are more topologies. There are some more crazy things out there, but these are the four that really get you started. And 95% of all the world's fuzzes stem from these four. So feel free to explore, play some other crazy stuff as well. And hit like if you liked it, subscribe to the episode, click the bell icon to get notifications of all future episodes. And in the description below is Band Lab. We normally jam and you can go over to that link and download jams from previous episodes and jam along with us, create your own music with that. Uh, that's it in the comments. Just let us know what you thought about this. And if you need any help, like I said before, have a great day. Bye-bye.